Asbury University, which is a private Christian college in Wilmore, Kentucky, outside Lexington, began hosting a prayer service a week ago, but it never ended. It's still going on. People just keep showing up from around the world. The university has even set up overflow chapels to accommodate demand. Here's what it looks like. A spiritual movement is what many say is happening at Asbury University right now. The event has been going nonstop since last Wednesday. WKYT's Chad Hedrick is live on Asbury's campus tonight. And Chad, I understand they've opened up even some overflow spaces there. Yeah, Bill and Amber, at one point, two chapels here on campus had to be used for overflow spaces because Hughes Auditorium here behind me was so full and they were playing a live stream of what was going on inside. Thousands of people have come from all over the country to be here for this movement and see what's happening here in Wilmore. We have to be on the brink of a devastating judgment in this nation. We have gone through some quasi-revivals. There are people who would argue that we've had some revivals, uh, that the gospel has spread, that Bibles have spread, that we're on television and radio and through all kinds of media, the gospel is going out, and uh, yet we see no, no reversing of the direction of this nation. By now, a lot of you probably saw or heard or seen or read in the newspaper that there is a major revival going on at Asbury College. A few students went for some kind of a regular prayer that they usually do at their chapel, and it turned into something that the world is actually now watching. I'm not skeptical of the move of God or the move of, of the Spirit of God happening at Asbury, but I might be skeptical that this might even be a revival. When we have a revival in the nation, that revival is supposed to turn the nation around. To me, I think it's kind of like a major break from all the satanic and demonic things that we've witnessed for the past couple weeks, and also all of the bad news. We are on the brink of war as we speak, and there are unidentified objects flying all over the place, which they call Chinese spy balloon. So the world is in turmoil. So for a news like this to kind of pop up and make national news, I think that's sort of a relief for me and I hope it is for you. And even Tucker Carlson from Fox News covered that event. Watch this. So we keep hearing about this. There haven't been many news stories on it, but it's all over social media on TikTok, actually, of all places. And Reports that people are flying in from Singapore and New Zealand to join whatever this is. And so we thought it'd be worth finding out, what is it? Allison Perfader is the student body president at Asbury University, and she joins us. Hey, Allison, you're so nice to come on. Thank you. What, what is this, do you think? Right, what is this? That's what we... I mean, that's the question, right? And um, a, a theme or a Bible verse that we've all been sharing with each other is Habakkuk 1. And the Lord says, look at the nations and watch for I'm doing something in your day that you wouldn't believe if you were told. And it's happening and we can hardly believe it. Well, it seems remarkable. I mean, so many stories you see them and you think that's very different. I'm not quite sure what it means, but it's worth learning more. So my understanding is this began in a completely conventional service and a boy got up and started talking about his own flaws and then it just something changed in the atmosphere and it never ended is that fair that's completely what happened um so here at asbury university three mornings a week we have chapel at 10 a.m sharp the whole student body gets together and we we sing praise to the lord and we hear a message from a speaker and for seemingly no reason at first on on wednesday february 8th it didn't end and that's that's kind of the logistical side of what's been going on and then you know, on the on the deeper side of things, what's been happening here since Wednesday is there's a there's a young army of believers who are rising to claim Christianity, the faith as their own, as a young generation and as a free generation, and that's why people can't get enough. That's amazing. So you, you felt like something like this was going to happen because everything finds equilibrium. I think. Who are the people who are coming? Where are they coming from? Um. We don't know most of them. Um, we've obviously been getting calls, hundreds of calls to the university switchboard number, um, but we have 
friends here from Brazil, from Indonesia, um, almost every state, um, and and they just keep coming and. And it's no wonder, you know, and it's like you said, I mean, especially in the midst of tragedies like what we've seen in Michigan State University and, and even yeah. farther back to 2020, especially our generation was impacted so much. And so you have to wonder, you know, what's going to break? And in this case, the Holy, the Holy Spirit has interceded for us here at Asbury and, and across the nation. I assume you don't know how long this will continue? Uh, I could not tell you, and I wouldn't want, wouldn't want to guess. <laughs> No, you, you Allison, thank you. Great to see you. I appreciate it. Thank you. Really, thank you. I appreciate you having me on. Of course. That's absolutely interesting to hear that in the first place they even have chapel services. It's also interesting to note that these young kids, once they leave home and go to university, they come out atheist or apathetic towards the Christian faith. A lot of them attend woke universities that do not talk about God, that do not talk about Christ, or don't even have any type of prayer whatsoever. For them to have prayer services in chapel throughout some time during the week, that's a big plus. Now, I also want you to know that this was not the first time a revival broke out at Asbury University. Back in 1970, a revival also happened over there. Let's watch this video together. On February 3rd, 1970, something happened on the campus of Asbury College in Wilmore, Kentucky. While many students across America were burning down buildings and rioting in the streets, students at Asbury were strangely drawn to their knees to pray. That was back in 1970. I know normally that when you're watching television, like everyone else, you have one eye up perhaps on the paper, one eye on television, or one ear to someone else in the room, or perhaps you're fixing the evening meal. But for the next two and a half minutes, I wish you'd stop everything you're doing, and I think you too are going to be impressed. It started at 10 o'clock yesterday morning. Chapel was scheduled to end at 11 o'clock yesterday morning. It didn't end at 11 o'clock yesterday morning. It didn't end at 11 o'clock last night. It didn't end at 11 o'clock this morning. In fact, as Jim and I took the air, it was still going on. Let's have a look and a listen. Well, hey, this is quite an event here at Asbury. What does this mean to you? Oh, I, can't, I can't express it. I tell you, the Lord has been planning this for so long. The prayers have been going up in girls and the guys' dorms and all over the world, I tell you, and it's finally happened. Where he let us know that before it happened, he said, during the prayer meeting in our dorm, and he said, it's going to happen tomorrow, and it did. Now, he just opened it up, and he let it fly, and that's all I can say. He told me that he wanted me to get up and sell them. I said, no way you're going to get me up if that kick me out of the seat, and he did. And I tell you, it just blessed everybody. I'm not kidding you, the greatest outpouring of of God's love and the Holy Spirit, and I can't express it. I tell you, I'm just amazed that I'm glorifying his name, I'm praising his name today. As you guys could see, 53 years ago in 1970, something very similar happened at Asbury College. Now, the question is, is it enough? Is this enough to turn this nation around? A nation that is utterly and totally depraved, is it enough? Let's listen a little bit to John MacArthur with a few insights of what kind of revivals happened in the Bible and what they did in the nation of Israel and how we ought to think about this revival for our nation. Jeremiah was a preacher for about the same length of time as I have been here, 42 years, 42 years. He preached during the reign of five kings. The first king was a man named Josiah. Josiah. The end of the reign of Josiah was a time of reformation and a time of revival. The law was recovered, and, uh, and Josiah sought to bring the law to the people, and it produced a revival. However, a prophetess named Huldah showed up and said, this is superficial, uh, this is man-centered, this is not going to last, this will have no permanent reformation. That was true. The uh, superficial revival under Josiah didn't last. What Josiah did was right, he did all the right things, but the people's response was surfeited and superficial. Josiah's reign was followed by the second king during the ministry of Jeremiah, a man by the name of Jehoahaz. He only lasted three months. He was followed by Jehoiakim, and uh, 
He returned the people to corruption. He led them right back into idolatry and the worship of false gods. He was followed by Jehoiakim, who also lasted three months. And Jehoiakim was followed by the final king during the time of Jeremiah and the last king of the southern kingdom before the captivity, a man named Zedekiah, who was a vacillating weakling, saw the nation more swiftly down the steep slide of depravity that led to absolute ruin and deportation. He had tough going. The first king, superficial revival, the next four, rapid decline. And through forty-two years of these five kings, Jeremiah's message never changed, never, ever changed. He was always the voice of God to that society, as any faithful preacher must be. His preaching in no way deterred the idolatry. His preaching in no way stopped the slide. His preaching in no way eliminated the judgment. He never saw essentially any impact on a national level through forty years of his efforts. He was faithful and he was despised, and eventually they threw him in a pit to try to shut him up. I see so many parallels between Jeremiah's time and Jeremiah and our time and faithful preachers today. We stand near the holocaust. We have to be on the brink of a devastating judgment in this nation. We have gone through some quasi-revivals. There are people who would argue that we've had some revivals, uh, that the gospel has spread, that Bibles have spread, that we're on television and radio and through all kinds of media, the gospel is going out, and uh, yet we see no, no reversing of the direction of this nation. We see no lasting results. The church seems superficial and shallow and consumed with self-fulfillment and self-gratification. So we come to a place in the life of Jeremiah that parallels our own time and we ask this question. How do we approach a nation on the brink of judgment? Let's learn from Jeremiah. At the end of the day, we have to hope and pray and keep on preaching the gospel. And again, my question is, is this revival enough to turn things around in the Senate? Is it enough to turn things around in the Congress? Is it enough to touch our president's heart, the ones that are in power? Is this revival enough? Whatever this is, it might not be a revival, it might not be enough to turn the entire nation around, but it might be just enough to turn some hearts towards the Lord. It might be just enough to cause people to cry out to God and trust in Him. It might just be enough to save some souls that are there at that campus. It might just be enough to touch some specific people that the Lord had in mind. I don't know the future and I don't know what fruit can come out of this, but all I hope is that there's fruit of salvation, there's fruit of repentance from sin and trusting in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. That I hope and pray for. This is it for this video. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Make sure to subscribe to our Patreon where we present weekly devotionals. Become a channel member by clicking the join button and follow us on Rumble and Instagram. If this is your first time on the channel, I invite you to subscribe and click the bell button to be notified each time we upload a new video. With love in Christ, John Henry with the Gospel of Christ. <laughs>